The COVID pandemic has altered just about every aspect of our lives, and that includes how Oklahomans participate in religious services. As ONR's Jason Doyle found out this week, every faith and denomination is dealing with its own unique set of challenges. I can say, you know, unequivocally, they did not teach us how to pastor during a pandemic in seminary. Reverend Shannon Fleck says the COVID pandemic is certainly changing the way people gather to worship. We have never in our lives, in our wildest imagination, um, planned for this concept that our parishioners and our people would not be able to gather safely in our buildings. That is just something that has not been on our radar. And so I feel like we're really experiencing this turning point for what faith might look like. For example, when Trinity Baptist Church stopped in-person services at the beginning of the pandemic, the pastor got creative. When we first had the uh, COVID hit, um, I started doing sermons on the porch. Everybody enjoyed the farm life uh, that we showed. We showed our animals and then we have a sermon. After months of a closed mosque, the Islamic Society of Greater Oklahoma City held its first in-person service just last week. It's been five months. Last Friday was the first Friday we opened the mosque. Um, we have worshipped um, outside before. Uh, we worshipped in a um, in a gym in our Islamic school before, but last Friday was the first Friday to open. A traditional Muslim prayer service would have had people shoulder to shoulder, but that had to change. At first, we have to cover our carpet with plastic uh, because that's easier to sanitize. And then we have to put marks uh, for people to stand six feet apart and everybody have to bring their own prayer mats. And Chaucy now holds multiple services to accommodate worshipers safely. The month of Ramadan, which is basically the peak of our year, that's the month um, in which the Quran was revealed. And that's a month where we have at least at least seven, eight hundred people per night here. A thousand people on a Friday, which is our holiest um, uh, day of the week. Um, of course, that was done via Zoom. The pandemic also is affecting the holidays that Christians, Jews and Muslims observe. One of the most difficult things was preaching to an empty church. Uh, even though we were live streaming on Sundays, we would come over here to the church and it was during Holy Week. It was the highest, it was Easter that we were, the masses were suspended. Rabbi Abby Jacobson is preparing for the Jewish high holy days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Because the Emanuel Synagogue has not resumed in-person services yet, she's engaging her congregation to see what their virtual services should include. They've been so helpful and so um, uh, uh, glad to be part of that process, which has been a, a tremendous relief and a tremendous help to me. And because the synagogue and the mosque have a type of membership fee program, COVID-19 has not been an adverse impact on their financial situation. However, the pandemic has stopped the practice of passing the plate in many Christian and Catholic churches. Novak says he's encouraging parishioners to give to the church online. The very first month after, after during the suspension, we had over 150 families that signed up for our online giving program. So that has been very, very helpful to, uh, because we're not passing the plate, or even if we are uh, at mass, people can bring their envelopes and we have places at the door. We don't pass the collection basket anymore. Masses have resumed in person at St. Francis of Assisi Parish, but there are important changes. Masks are required. Hymnals are replaced by one-time use sheets and the sacrament of communion is different too. There's no common cup anymore. Uh, we used to offer the cup, uh, which is be the precious blood uh, to the parishioners um, and that we have to cease doing that. The religious leaders we spoke to say technology has proven integral in reaching their congregations. But we have tried our best to make sure that the stuff we do online is as familiar as possible and has as many of the communal aspect, the communal worship aspects as we can um, without over zooming people. As far as worship, we utilized all the uh, uh, technology from Zoom uh, to um, YouTube, to Facebook. Uh, we kept in touch with people who were sick. Uh, we kept in touch with people who were, who were needing uh, some help and advice all via Zoom. We got one of those little iPads and in our chapel, we figured out how to do a live stream mass and we were able to broadcast the mass to all of our parishioners or anyone really on YouTube. 
Uh, even people that were not members of the parish would tune in. Rabbi Jacobson offers this piece of advice for the faithful, regardless of denomination. If you're a member of a house of worship, um, please send a love note to every member of your clergy because it's likely that they have not had a day off since March. Um, they are likely overstressed and they are absorbing an awful lot of yuck because there's an awful lot of free-floating yuck. Jason Doyle, The Oklahoma News Report.